Stephen Rapp, Chief Prosecutor, Special Court for Sierra Leone, and currently prosecuting Charles Taylor. How much does, does Robert Jackson mean to Steve Rapp in the sense of the work you're doing today? Well, it means a great deal. I mean, all of us are inspired by the, um, by the language uh, of, of Jackson's uh, addresses uh, in particular. Um, the, uh, and I, uh, uh, in, in, in closing the, uh, in the media judgment, uh, uh, closing, closing the argument in the media trial on the, on the 22nd of August uh, 2003, I uh, uh, chose to, um, to paraphrase with, with attribution uh, the, uh, the words of Jackson where he um, uh, quoted from, from Richard III on, on Gloucester and the Queen, you know, uh, say they are not dead, but dead they are. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, to say that is to say these men <laughs> Are innocent, and there was no war, there was no crime, etc. So, I, you know, thought that fit extremely well with the sort of uh, uh, defense that they that they had put on. Even though, of course, Jackson's comment to some extent was referring to war and, and the aggression, etc., mm -hmm. as opposed to the kind of crimes. But uh, uh, you know, and and then I was when I come when it comes time to uh, to make an address. Uh, uh, like I did on the on the fourth of June, opening the Taylor case, and I look back at uh, at uh, uh, Jackson's opening address, reflect on it, not necessarily quote from it, but sure. think about what to, what uh, what needs to be done, and uh, and to be completely frank, I was much in mind of uh, of, of Jackson when I um, when I was cross examining one of the accused. Uh, uh, I had to pro uh, cross cross examine. Uh, Ferdinand Nahimana, who was one of the accused in the media trial. Nahimana was a brilliant man, uh, is a brilliant man. He's now serving a, a life sentence. Uh, professor of, of history, uh, graduate with distinction from, from the Sorbonne uh, in Paris, uh, uh, and uh, the, the, the intellectual father of, of, uh, of, uh, of RTLM, its founder, its really its director, its, its man. Uh, the defense complained always that we were trying to turn him into Goebbels, <laughs> but uh, to some extent, if the shoe fit, uh, it, it could be worn. Right. And uh, and but uh, a very clever man with with a lot of, uh, of uh, public writings about history. Uh, there were a lot of allegations uh, by Rwandans that uh, and others uh, after the genocide. But if you went back and read his dissertation, if you went back and read his his book on. Uh, which was based on his dissertation about Rwanda, the emergence of the state, uh, etc. Uh, you would find, uh, you know, the, the inkling of the of the of the, of the genocide, mm -hmm. and, uh, and um, that wasn't completely fair. But but certainly he was uh, uh, an absolutely you know, uh, I shouldn't call it xenophobic, but I mean you know an absolutely super loyal Hutu person that. Uh, thought that the greatest thing that had ever happened in Africa or anywhere was the overthrow of the Tutsi uh, monarchy and the Tutsi uh, control that the, the they'd had under the Belgians. And, and he was absolutely dedicated to preventing the Tutsis from, from, from putting the Hutus back into slavery. And, and you saw that. But I had to cross-examine him. And, uh, and of course, he's a very clever fellow. And I spent a fair amount of time looking at, at Jackson's cross-examination of Goebbels, yeah. which has often been criticized. Uh, and Trying to to make sure that uh, that uh, every question that I put uh, didn't didn't give the guy an opportunity to uh, to make a speech uh, and, and, and restate his position and went, uh, went after his particular uh, responsibilities. So. You know, as as uh, in Jackson, very mindful of the gearing mm -hmm. uh, cross examination and the fact that uh, he was trying to put on for. Uh, Eternity, mm -hmm. the justification for the rise of the Nazi regime, and uh, do you find that that might be what a Charles Taylor, if he ever decides to put himself on the stand, that he'll try to do the same thing? Well, we'll see. I mean, uh, Goering is, um, you know, if one and I studied it from the point of view of the of the Nuremberg indictment, but I I, I sense that uh, that Goering in his uh, uh, in his in the cross examination. As frustrating as it may have been, and there was this perception that Goering was given this chance to pontificate and speak and, and be a, 
uh, and appear to be a formidable individual. But as he was doing that, he was he was admitting <laughs> to uh, oh, sure. uh, to at least <laughs> you know uh, three counts of the indictment. I mean, he never would he would never allow responsibility for the for those unfortunate massacres, et cetera, of civilians. Yeah. But but everything else, as far as starting the war and the leadership principle and all of that, you know, he was just uh, just absolutely incorrigible about. So so obviously you're giving an arrogant guy an opportunity to to, to spout off. It's like uh, the court martial movie with Tom Cruise, et cetera, where, you know, the Jack Nicholson character, you know, spouts off and, uh, you know, looks impressive, but hangs himself yeah. in a sense. Yeah. And so that's what, that's what uh, Goering was, was doing. And, and, and those that were following the theatrics of it uh, uh, thought that he was getting the better of it, but, then, but he was getting the better of it by being uh, arrogant and, and mm -hmm. justifying uh, what he was doing without, without any conscience whatsoever. So uh, there is that aspect of it. I don't know if... Uh, Taylor will be uh, uh, quite that way. I mean, the, the, the indication is that his defense is uh, that everything he did was, uh, you know, for peace and that uh, those, those incidents where we show him uh, uh, essentially calling and controlling the RUF were, were efforts to rein them in or he was doing it on behalf of uh, Kofi Annan or Jesse Jackson or Jimmy Carter or Bill Clinton, et cetera, mm -hmm. in order to, to make peace and save lives and, and all of this kind of thing. And, uh, Certainly, I've read enough of the late night interviews that people had with him, et cetera, to have, have a sense of what, uh, uh, of the kind of thing that, that, he'll, uh, that he'll come at us with. But, uh, you know, um, we'll, we'll see. I mean, he's obviously a, um, a, an individual that uh, can be uh, uh, charming and disarming and, and manipulative and, and, and can, at first blush, uh, appear to. Uh, uh, to be in good faith, but, mm -hmm. uh, but clearly we, we think, uh, based upon our analysis of the evidence that we're presenting, uh, you know, 62 insider witnesses, uh, uh, you know, that uh, this guy is uh, incredibly responsible. Mm -hmm. We'll have a hard time uh, really answering to the, uh, to the evidence in the case, so we'll, we'll see if he does testify. That's, that's many months away. Okay. Yeah.